Okay, welcome back. We'll start with chapter 12, unless there are any other further questions. No? Okay, you can always come back. If there are questions. Okay, um, so let's um, uh, look at chapter chapters, the next three chapters. Um, we can just go through that. Okay, so um, chapter 12, Paul starts by saying, okay, now concerning spiritual gifts. Okay, so uh, he's he's making it clear. Okay, now I just want to address this whole thing of spiritual gifts. And uh, verse 1, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Okay, so he's already taught them about spiritual gifts during his time with them, uh, about anointing of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, everything. So people are already walking in it. Okay, so how do we know that? Because in chapter 1, I think, where he says, when he's addressing the congregation, he says, um, uh, verse 4, uh, verses 4 and 5, right? He says, I thank my God. That is chapter 1, uh, verse 4, verse 5. He says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance, all knowledge. And if you look at verse 7, he says, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's addressing this congregation, which is um, which is already has an understanding, right? Uh, which all, already is walking in the gifts um, uh, and so on, right? So he's, but he's saying that I don't want you to be ignorant of it. So he's reiterating what he has already taught them. He's reiterating uh, some things, some, some things to bring in correction in the way they were uh, ministering the gifts, right? So, Okay, so let's look at uh, a few verses here. Uh, the first few verses. You know that he says, "You know that you were Gentiles, carrying away to these dumb idols." However, you were called, led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Diversity of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is to given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit, uh, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. Okay, so um, so he's addressing the whole thing of in, um, you know uh, spiritual gifts, and he's saying, okay, these are first of all, the, he's addressing that these are spiritual gifts, and the Greek word used there, pneumatikos, which means something that is not fleshly, something that is not carnal, um, something that is not from man. Right? Not it's not man-made. It is spirit given, like spirit breathed. So saying. Spiritual gifts, they are they are spiritual, which means they are supernatural. They are given by God, and it's not a natural ability, physical ability, um, though that is also you know that is also something that God will use. But it here specifically saying this is not a natural physical ability, but something that is spirit given, right? So um, then he says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Okay, so he says when you were Gentiles, when you were non-believers. You were carried away to these dumb, dumb idols, however you were led. So saying, you know, voiceless, uh, non-speaking, non-communicating idols. You were led to it. You were led to worship. But he says that when a person who speaks by the Spirit of God, right, who ministers by the Spirit of God, um, no one will call Jesus accursed, or no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is um, why is he saying that? He's going to, you know, he's going to talk about the gifts. He's going to talk about the gifts being the expression of the Spirit and so on. So, saying, okay, this is this comes from the Lord, and so no one is going to make that contradiction. They're not going to say Jesus is accursed. Um, you know, no, they're not. They are going to affirm that Jesus is Lord, and it is by the same Holy Spirit. Right then, verse four. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Right, different kinds of ministries by the same spirit. 
Um, so gifts, the word used there is charisma, meaning uh, or charismata, which is gifts of grace. Right? This is not something, not things that you earned, not things that you accomplished, right, by your own will or strength or something that you did, but it's a gift of grace. It's something that is given, right? You receive freely. Right? So, um, so having said that, it says there are different kinds of gifts. There are different ministries. Um, meaning different ways in which you serve or the different ministry offices, uh, the different kinds of activities, that is verse 6, right? different workings, um, uh, supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit. But it is the yeah, same Spirit. The source is the Holy Spirit. right? So while there might be a difference. Uh, so, um, so we need to understand that. And the discerning part is that uh, Jesus... Uh, you know, the, no one speaking by the Spirit or ministering by the Spirit will call Jesus accursed. You know? So Jesus is affirmed as the Lord and Savior, right? Um, so we can have we we understand that illustration. There are many kinds of gifts, and then they are you know, for different purposes. They accomplish uh, different things, right? Uh, bring in different uh, aspects of um, the Lord's ministry to the body. Right, ministry to the believers, the gifts actually bring in that. And uh, it says in verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. This is the objective. This is the, this is the end result or end working of the gifts. So it's called, first of all, it's called the manifestation of the Spirit. Manifestation meaning something that is put on display, an expression. Right, it is an expression of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Right, so again, I, I know we we know that that the all the holy all the gifts of the Spirit are expressions of the Holy Spirit. So who holds this? The Holy Spirit, right? Who indwells us? So it is an expression of the Holy Spirit who indwells us. So that answers the question of you know how many gifts can I you know can I walk in? Right, it is. The gifts of the Spirit are an expression of the Spirit. So, who indwells us? So that that would answer us that you know that question, meaning that since it's a manifestation of the Spirit, well, as He wills, as He chooses, He can actually express in all the gifts of the Spirit, right? All the gifts that are, that we see there uh, through a believer. So that possibility is very much there, right? Now, why is uh, the why is the use of the gift or what happens because of the use of the gift it is for the profit of all it is for the benefit of all so that the believer is benefited okay so it is it is not to put down a believer it is not to harm a believer it is not to even you know uh, bring uh, or authenticate some somebody's ministry no Th those could happen but the real reason for the manifestation of the spirit is so that each person each believer can be benefited right so uh, verse 8 onwards he goes on to explain what are the gifts of the spirit so we know that whole list nine of them right uh, so he lists all that um so he distributes to each one individually as he wills now again this is in the context of a meeting, right? When whenever the people gather, so he's saying the Holy Spirit distributes to each one individually as he decides, right? As he wills, is as he desires, as he as he decides, right? So, um, so this is in the context of a of a gathering, right? Okay. Then uh, let's look at uh, any questions till now. Um, yeah. Whenever people gather in the sense, the gift is for everybody. Ah, so the expression of the Spirit, uh, the gift is an expression of the Holy Spirit who indwells us, right? So he's specifically talking about a gathering, that when they gather together, because that is what uh, he's, uh, he's mentioning, right? Um, uh, diversity of, uh, uh, yeah. So in a, in, a, in a setting, in a gathering, when people gather together, he distributes to each one in the gathering as he wills, as he decides, as he desires. So that is what? Yeah, so the possibility is that 
all can actually express or manifest all nine gifts of the spirit and why do we say that it is because that it is an expression of the holy spirit and the holy spirit holds this ability and he indwells us so that is a that is a reason right it's not because many people think that okay he gives a gift he gives a gift and you know and there's another gift which is waiting to be given so i receive it and i take it and i you know more no the holy spirit expresses himself through the gift but he is the one who indwells us fully so so in every believer the same holy spirit having all the nine gifts indwells and this gift is actually an expression a manifestation of the holy spirit so that's why he goes on to say hey, it's the same spirit who works all the gifts it's the same spirit who works different kinds of offices but then the question is okay why is it that some people are used more in this particular thing right so the answer for that is when it comes to ministry office right the fivefold or uh, you know some of the membership gifts that is also something that we look at right so why because god places them in the body for a particular function right so to fulfill that function some of these expressions of the spirit are more prominent or more frequent right so to fulfill that function to fulfill fulfill that ministry office so that is why we see that right so yeah. you have a question um, nikhil or oh, this is what you are asking yeah mm okay so this is you know this so th this actually frees the believer and also empowers us you know the the potential of a church right so if you are leading a gathering so you look at all the people who are there in the gathering you know whatever 25 30 whoever so you see you just imagine the potential if each of them would first of all understand receive this truth and each of them would pursue god um because we are supposed to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts we desire that god would use them in these manners like right? you see the the kind of church that would be raised up the church that is you know similar to the, the corinthian church this was a very spiritual church this was a church that was moving in these gifts so that is something that we can expect of all the uh, of all the believers in a gathering right so yeah also this was when like when we say like uh, distributing to each one individually as, as he wills. wills yeah so like uh, when we look at uh, before chapters like regarding head covering communion mm. we know like it is specific to one context it is to certain custom cuz it was already mentioned right, there right. Mm. like for this is there anything that we can make sure like when we say he wills it is particularly to that gathering but not like uh, for one person this uh, is how we can yeah so it. when we read through till the end of 14 then we realize that uh, it's actually for the gifts are for everybody so when we read through like especially when we read through end of 12 he talks about honestly desire the best gifts then uh in 14 after the chapter on love he talks about you know pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and then you know through so right through we see that okay he's talking about gifts in plural he's talking about desiring gifts in plural so why would he say that unless that you know that yeah it is yeah so it, unless that you know we, uh, why are we saying that we are designing holy spirit come manifest yourself in in all these ways and so he's saying plural gifts desire special gifts so all the nine gifts you can actually do that but in a gathering maybe god would you know you someone to bring a word of knowledge some other person to bring a you know a gift of healing um and so on so yeah okay so it is for the profit of all right uh, it is for the benefit of all um and yeah we we look at all these uh, gifts so uh, verse 12 onwards he talks he talks about the body 
okay to give clarity about the function of every member in the body so he's looking is is comparing the body of believers the church with the physical body you know uh, a, a person has and how the different parts of the body or different members of the body work together in order to accomplish something to help that body that person right so so that is what let's uh, just read through you know it says verse 12 for as the body is one and has many members but all the members of that one body being many uh, one body so also is christ for by one spirit we were baptized into one body whether jews or greeks whether slaves or free and all have been made uh, to drink into one spirit for in fact the body is not one member but many and verse 15 onwards he goes on to say uh, so some of the struggles or uh, some of the comparisons that people could have with one another. Uh, so he's talking about that, right? Verse 15. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the hand to the feet, or the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, these members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schism, meaning division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Right? So uh, it's talking about different members. If, if you look at the first part of it, he's saying, you know, uh, like the foot should say, uh, foot is saying, okay, I'm not a hand, therefore I'm not part of the body. So it's comparing, saying, okay, I'm, I'm not like the hand. The hand has got certain abilities. I'm not like it, so I don't, I'm, I don't think I belong here. Right, so he's saying you cannot say that. Then further on, he's saying uh, if you look at verse twenty-one, he's saying these members are comparing with one another and saying, "Hey, you are different from me. Therefore, I have no need of you." Okay, so in the first part, it's like I am different from you, so I don't think I belong here. In the second part, verse twenty-one says, uh, "You are different from me, so you don't belong here." So he says both. Is not practical. We are all actually part of the same body. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> verse 13, by one spirit, we were all baptized. Like by the same Holy Spirit who ministers in the gifts, by the same Holy Spirit, whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, a Greek or a slave or free, we have been made to drink into one spirit and baptized into one body. Meaning that we, we've all had the same experience, right? It's experience with the spirit. And spiritually, we are baptized or immersed or placed in the spiritual body of Christ. Okay, so, well, because of comparison, you don't have to feel that you don't belong because you are different. And because you are different, another person is different, you cannot reject that person because they are so different from you or their ability and function is different. So it's talking about function, actually. Their function is different. So you cannot reject them, right? Um, so we are part of the body and we are members uh, in the individually, right? So um, with that, he's also talking about um, some of the membership. We can, I think we can talk about some of the membership gifts, right? In the sense, because we are part of the body and because the members have different functions. I think this we would have already learned in the you know gifts of the spirit class and also in um, the prophetic 
class. <clears throat> She's saying because you are you are different functions, um, you are actually empowered by the spirit to carry out those functions. You know, let's look at a few verses. Uh, one is Romans twelve. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, Romans twelve. So in um, verse four, Romans twelve verse four, it says, "For as we have many members in one body, and all members do not have the same function." Okay, so that's the reality, right? For a physical body, this is how it is. <coughs> So he says, we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Same thing what he has shared in 1 Corinthians 12, right? Verse 12. So here, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in, ex in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liber liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, so this is in relation to the function. Okay, you have different functions, and therefore to fulfill that function, you have these different gifts. So use it. Okay, same thing he would say in Ephesians 4. Where he's talking about the ministry gifts, Ephesians four and seven, uh, he's talking about the uh, fulfilling the ministry offices and the and the ministry gifts, right? So um, each one grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift, and then in verse eleven he says he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So it's uh, talking about the uh, ministry, um, sorry, the membership gift and also the ministry gift. Right? Okay, so um, there is that in the notes you see that uh, you know that um, uh, that graphic there, which kind of explains uh, gifts of the spirit is for all membership gifts is for all the members, and uh, that membership function you know is given so that all these gifts are actually to. For you to for us to fulfill the function in the body of Christ. So then we also have what is called as a ministry gift, and these are for some, not for all. Okay, that I think we understand. Yeah. Okay, so, so these gifts, uh, which are an expression of the Holy Spirit, enable us to fulfill God's appointed function okay, um, in the body of Christ. Right? So let's look at uh, verse 28. Okay, so verse 28, and God has appointed these in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Okay, so, um, so he's talking about ministry appointments, God has appointed in the body, right? And he's saying, okay, this is um, he's listing down everything, right? From apostle, prophet, and also, if you see, he's talking about gifts of healing, uh, miracles and gifts of healing, which are, again, uh, which are a function, which are uh, something that empower the ministry gift of the evangelist, right? And also, he, uh, sorry, helps and administration. Uh, which are which go with the ministry gift of the pastoral, right, uh, and so on. So then they ask the question, right? Are are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? And it's a rhetoric, which means the implied answer is no. Okay, the answer to all these questions is no. You know, not not all are pastors, not all are apostles, not all are workers of miracles. Then the problem happens, you know, when it comes to tongues, right? Or even the you know interpretation of tongues. He says, "Okay, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret tongues?" Right? Then the conclusion is no. Then we come to the conclusion, okay, maybe gift of tongues is not for 
all because not all can do this but when we ask the you know when we look at what paul is addressing here he's talking about ministry appointments in the church right the apostle the prophet the uh, and also along with that ministry appointment he's talking about these gifts which are also ministry appointments like healing uh, even the praying in tongues being a ministry appointment uh, interpretation of tongues being a ministry appointment right so uh, so that is what he is addressing here uh, because otherwise instructions like verse 31 in the same chapter earnestly desire the best gifts instruction like chapter 14 verse 1 pursue love desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy all that doesn't make sense doesn't make sense at all so he's you know so he's talking is the only way it makes sense is because he is actually talking about ministry appointments god has appointed these in the body to carry out certain ministry functions and to fulfill that function there is this empowering through these gifts right so um so that is that is why he says earnestly desire the best gifts the, the gifts that are um that that would actually uh, help you to fulfill that particular function that particular role okay um okay so with that he comes to the end of that chapter earnestly desire and 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 then he he says and yet i show you a more excellent way and then goes into chapter 13 and talks about love right so it's a it's a interesting uh, chapter chapter 13 where is comparing love with all the other kind of gifts you know and he's saying okay if i have that but if i don't have this then it becomes very ineffective right i can have which means the possibility of having those gifts possibility of living in a certain way like even with generosity and giving and even martyrdom but if you don't have love then it's you know so, so in other words he's talking about the importance of love with regard to the use of the gifts okay um so let's look at um uh, these verses so chapter 1 um uh, chapter 13 verse 1 though i speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal so saying tongues of men and angels again an insight into what gift of tongues is it could be an earthly language tongues of men or of angels uh, and of angels which is a heavenly language but the thing is that if you don't have love if you if you're walking i mean if you have these gifts but you don't have love then it's it's like a sounding brass or clanging cymbal something that irritates something that's noisy uh, and it's not pleasant at all right verse 2 though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries all knowledge and though i have all faith that i could move mountains but have not love i am nothing meaning you you are extremely gifted extremely spiritual but without this characteristic of love you are nothing which means in god's eyes he his rating would be you, know, you are nothing right because this love is a god kind of love which god expects you to walk in right and verse 3 is talk about the acts you know some something which a person does first is talk about generosity though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned and but have not love it profits me nothing okay um so it talks about the extreme case of you know even martyrdom and even extreme generosity you know you all your goods you're giving to feed the poor but if you're doing it with the wrong motive and if it's not because of love in your heart then it is it is unprofitable right then it goes on to talk about the characteristics of love love is love is suffers long meaning it's patient it's kind uh love does not envy so which means a practical outworking of love okay so this god kind of love this is the practical outworking of it you can say okay i you know i have this love for god's people but then how do you show it it is like this you no know, love is patient it's kind it does not envy does not parade itself which means it's not proud it's not puffed up 
it does not behave rudely right does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails love never fails meaning it doesn't come to an end right that is what it means love never fails it doesn't run out of or it doesn't come to an end then verse 8 he says he's talking about the gifts right he's saying these gifts there is a date there is a time where there will be no use of it it will come to an end okay so he's saying whether they are prophecies they will fail meaning it will come to an end whether they are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away so what is he referring to is referring to a time he's going to talk about that um a time frame where these things will stop you know there's no need for the functioning of these gifts right says uh, but love never fails right verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away with okay so what is this perfect that that which is perfect that has come okay he's going to explain that so he says when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things but now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now i know in part then i shall know just as i also am known so he's talking about about being face to face being face to face with the lord right now i see dimly but then it will be without any uh, any kind of uh, barrier i shall i'm known in now i know in part but then i i also have full understanding i shall know just as i also am known and uh, verse 13 he says now abide faith hope and love these three but the greatest of these is love okay so so he's talking about the a time when when there is a you know we are with the lord face to face there is no need for all these gifts right for the so these these things will cease so the lord which means that the lord will not express himself through us in these in these ways right word of knowledge to help another person uh you know it doesn't have to be there because you will know just as you are known you will have that face to face encounter with god so there's no requirement right for a word of knowledge everything we need comes from the lord right directly uh, you are strength and you you know you have that complete understanding and he's talking about that time right when we are with the lord so um so the greatest of this is love because love will never cease because it's it is the agape the unconditional love which is the characteristic of god himself right so this will never cease that will never fail okay so he goes on to say chapter 14 and verse 1 pursue love you know go after ensure that this kind of love is there in your life the love that does not envy the love that is patient the love that is kind the love that is not proud does not be make sure that this is part of your living this is part of your life right because this is going to be part of eternity right um and all the other things gifts yes it's for the benefit of all yes it is the expression of the spirit yes it is given by the holy spirit but there's a time when all this will come to an end so he's putting these gifts and the love of god uh god's kind of god kind of love in the in its proper perspective okay so we can understand that yes maybe the corinthian church was getting puffed up getting proud because of the spirituality right there's a pride because of spirituality hey i'm god is using me in all these ways they are you know they're becoming proud uh god is using me in these gifts they are becoming proud right so he has to say, tell them that these gifts are for the benefit of all are for the profit of all well we're talking about using these gifts in the body understand that we are one body you are a believer god has placed us in that one body 
and yes there are different ministry functions no need to you know uh, look down on someone no need to look down on yourself it is the same god who works all these things right and about love he's saying if you don't have love then in, you know if you don't have the love which is the character of god which is being christ like if you don't have that if you are highly gifted then there is no point there is no use it counts as nothing you might be spiritually gifted you know uh, but uh, if you don't have the character of god which is love if you're not christ like then it amounts as nothing because the gifting will cease god's love will not okay? so that's in the eternal perspective this is something character of god christ likeness is something that is uh, you know so he's putting things in perspective and saying you know if somebody says okay if love is something that is going to be eternal let me just focus on that and not concentrate on the gifts right because you can come to that conclusion right so for those people maybe who saying okay i don't want anything to do with gifts i don't want to anything to do with you know all these things uh, but let me just focus on character the nature of god etc so he's not done yet he's saying pursue love and desire spiritual gifts right so he's continuing to talk about spiritual gifts knowing fully well that on this earth you know if we are to be witnesses right witnesses with power the way jesus wanted every disciple to be the reason for every disciple to be baptized in the spirit acts chapter you know acts chapter 1 wait so that you may be filled with the spirit you might be endured with power on high so that you can be witnesses so since that is that is the lord's heart so he's continuing you know he's saying first you love desire spiritual gifts right you need to do both because that is what the gifts are for that is why the holy spirit wants to empower you uh, and he's saying desire spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy okay um you have a question francis yeah so what are the gift like and the coming to the gift uh like the gift which holy spirit given yeah it will take it away like if is will god uh, yes. stop using it yes, in yes, that yes. manner okay so um so let's say god is using in like word of knowledge word of wisdom whatever um, you know consistently right you are talking about okay as a membership function this is i see god using me more and more in this now for whatever reason you know the question is will god take it away okay uh, now now why do we why do you think that god will take it away? there could be a reason right like um is like not walking on that gift like uh, example like i got the gift of prophecy mm. but i am not prophesying not using it yes. okay neglecting yes. the gift yeah um. or like there is one case uh, or else like i am not living in a spiritual way mm. right so i'm like i mean maybe manipulating people with it or whatever i'm not i'm not honoring god with it yeah so these are real uh, scenarios you know that that happen so so the the thing that we have in scripture is um because of neglect or because of disuse um it's not that god will take it away but we become a little bit ineffective in it right or we're not really walking in the way that of using it in the way that are, maybe it becomes less sharp like for example if you see uh, first timothy paul is actually telling timothy you know don't neglect the gift that is in you uh, which was given to you by impartation by laying on of hands of the elder so he's saying don't neglect and uh, and then there in in timothy's case it was probably because of fear because after that he says you know god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind so maybe he felt intimidated because there were older people and etc so he says you know god has not given us a spirit of fear. so so the, so what we understand is that yes we are not supposed to neglect it the uh, when we neglect it or when we don't use it uh, well 
we uh, it's like not using a particular muscle it's like that it becomes weak in the sense that we are not sharp enough to receive and function in it so that is the thing right um, like for example uh, if you look at romans chapter 10 um like romans 10 verse 29 right so it says for the gifts and the calling of god are irrevocable is what uh, we see right calling 1029 yeah I'm sorry, sorry, uh, 1129, sorry. Uh, 11. Romans 11, verse 29. Right? For the gifts and the calling of God are irre irrevocable, is what it says. So which means that God does not take back, but we become ineffective in it. And this other scenario of, um, you know, you're using, you're misusing the gift. You're, you're not, you're exploiting, maybe, um, and people are being hurt. Well, what what would happen in that case? Well, the thing is, you're going. I mean, you're not glorifying God. You're bringing in more, more and more of, uh, you know. Uh, so there would be impact. There would be definitely. There would be some kind of thing that you open your door to, so deception, uh, and it's going to ultimately come back to, you know, to have impact in your life, uh, for sure, right? So, uh, so that's the part of it. We open our lives to deception. We open our lives to maybe lying spirits, whatever. Uh, if you willfully walk, you know, but then God is going to continue to give you grace um, and continue to reach out and make sure that you come back. You know, that's because that's God's heart. Um, and even God's heart in reaching out to the Corinthian church, you know, it's, it's that, you know, there's a lot of things that are not going right, but the purpose of the commandment or the instruction is to bring back, to restore the person. So, so God would you know, in all fairness, with all patience, reach out to that person who's also not walking right to reach out to that person. Because there are, you know, situations where people are highly spiritual, but not Christ-like. Right? So God would reach out and, uh, yeah, so that's, that's something we can be assured of, that God will reach out in order to bring back that person. But um, it's sad that it creates a lot of confusion. It, a lot of people are hurt. And the unbeliever is making fun. <laughs> See, he said, okay, this person is talking like this. Look at the kind of life. And uh, yeah, so that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. No question, Pastor. Regarding this only. Yeah. So recently, I'm talking with the pastor. So he's a group of pastors. Okay. So one pastor like said like this because of some of the like fear for him like mm. to prophesy he prayed and he stopped talking in prophecy like oh. and now he decided to uh, the gift of prophecy so mm. it will possible it is possible to yeah, yeah, yeah definitely definitely like i know of uh, yeah so because of fear or whatever you know this person said i don't want to and even maybe could have even prayed saying god you know don't use me in this way don't but now, now um, yeah, the thing is to again go back to him and you understand. Okay, this is what it is. God's heart is definitely to bless the person, bless the other person, edification, exhortation, and comfort, which is what prophecy does. So, um, yeah, so definitely God will, you know, uh, move uh, in this case as well. Yeah. yeah. So this instruction in chapter fourteen and verse one is uh, for all. Right for all of us, uh, no matter you know, it covers everything. You know, we might have this kind of uh, um, our experiences out of fear, out of neglect. It is for all. Um, saying, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy, because it is to hear God's voice, do what God wants us to do. It brings uh, benefit to the church. Right. Any you have a question? Okay. Chapter 12, verse 13. 30. Okay, yeah. Do, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Yeah. 
have that uh, gift of the Holy Spirit to heal. This is about the healing ministry you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. so he's Down yeah healing. he's talking specifically about um, um, God has appointed these in the church. Verse twenty eight. Right now, God has appointed these in the church. So he's talking about apostles, prophets, teachers, and in line with that, he's also talking about the appointment of miracles, appointment of gifts of healings, and so on. So, so that is in line with that is the, is the question. You know, do all do this? And so, uh, the answer is no. Obviously, the ministry of healings, yes. Yeah, so ministry of healing or also ministry function also. Yeah, ministry function. Yes, it's for every believer because, yeah, because when we look at uh, the Great Commission itself, the Lord Jesus, you know, those who believe will do this, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons, so uh, pray in unknown tongues. So it's it's for every believer, right? So here he's, he's talking about specific appointments thing mm, because otherwise he will not uh, follow up with that question you know verse 31 uh, earnestly desire the best gifts is what he says but earnestly desire the best gift so when you say best gift it is the gift that is suited for that occasion that solves that particular need uh, or it takes care of that particular challenge you know that's the best gift so so the instruction is earnestly desire the best gifts, and then he talks up, talks about you know, what is this excellent way. He talks about love, and then he comes back saying, "Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts." Again, why should he say that if God, for every believer, if God would not manifest in this way, right? So he's saying, um, "Desire the best gifts, and especially that you may." Prophesy, and he goes on to say, "What does prophecy do?" Right, right. But... Yeah, we'll continue. Yeah. Oh, almost there. End of uh, thing. Okay, so uh, just a few verses here. He's talking about pursuing love, designing special gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And he goes on to say, what happens when you pray in tongues? What happens when you prophesy? Right. So he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. No one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Right. So, um, so several things that we understand, uh, we get insight about the gifts of this, uh, uh, gift of tongues, and also about gift of prophecy. Right. Okay. So we'll stop here. And uh, we'll continue next class with this. Thank you. God bless.